Hey! Today we're going to look really quick at how to bring your patterns from Adobe Illustrator into Spoonflower or Contrato or any website that wants a tile of a pattern. Um, Illustrator is really great for making repeat patterns, but it isn't. Uh, it doesn't make the this exporting process to be super straightforward. Um, it's not too hard though, so let's jump into it. Uh, made these patterns really quick uh, for my friend Jack. Uh, he plays the bass and the back of his bass has this really cool symbol on it. Uh, so I made these um, few motifs based on that and then developed these patterns. So uh, they're kind of maybe logo mania inspired. Um, these patterns uh, are fairly straightforward. For this first one, I just put some artwork on a square, um, but because I wanted this gold texture on the stroke, before I made it into a repeating pattern, I had to rasterize it. It gave me an error message um, when I tried to make a um, an object with a pattern on it into a pattern. You can't do that. So I had to go to object, rasterize, and rasterize it before I could make it into a pattern. That's why we have two here, um, actually same for each of the rest of these. This is just on a simple re rectangle. Uh, one thing of note is that in the past I have had trouble getting artboards to export with more than um, two decimal points after the number. I actually don't know if this is still true anymore. Um, I'm working in inches right now, uh, but out of habit, I always round up, um, I always round my rectangles off so that they uh, have just two decimal points after the, um, after the end. Uh, so that's something to note. Uh, then uh, we are going to use the artboard tool and uh, we are going to use an interesting function of the artboard tool, uh, which is that it can um, make a artboard the size of any object. So for example, if I click on this object right here, uh, I have to click twice, and then it makes a artboard that is that size. So up here, we are going to just click on that rectangle and then uh, it has made an artboard that is that size and that is ready to export. Um, so in a minute we'll export that and we'll bring that into uh, Spoonflower. Um, this artwork, uh, again, because I have the single tile of it, we're again gonna use that function. Um, just a note on how I made this, because I have some artwork overhanging the edge here, uh, I put a bounding box back here, so there's an invisible rectangle um, back there, and what that does is when that's the backmost thing in the stack, when you select everything, it trims the pattern to the size of the artwork. Um, we are, I have already made sure that this is, uh, only has two decimal points after the uh, main number. <laughs> it only has two decimal points, uh, two digits after the decimal point. Uh, and again, we're going to use the artboard tool and we're going to click on that rectangle. Uh, I'm having to click twice and then that is also prepped for exporting. So those two work exactly the same way, whether they have the bounding box or not, you just use the artboard tool and click underneath it. Um, now, this artwork I made a little bit more freestyle. Um, I simply rasterized my artwork because it has a pattern in it and then I went to object pattern make and uh, I just messed around with the pattern, um, you know, found something I liked, I copied and pasted the motif, I rotated it, you know, I, I just I just played with it until I saw um, something I liked. I'm going to hit cancel because I've already made it. Um, then I was left with a transparent pattern. So in order to get this nicer looking artwork, I just put it on a rectangle of 
um, the same dark gray as the other patterns. Oops, I accidentally double clicked. It uh, entered isolation mode. No, uh, so that's how I made this pattern, but how do we export it for Spoonflower? So we need some information about this pattern. Uh, so I'm going to double click on it in the swatches panel. Uh, so I'm going to double click. And in the swatches panel, uh, we need to write down the width and the height. Uh, so the width is longer than two, um, there's longer than two decimal places after um, the decimal point. So I'm going to shorten that a bit, shouldn't make too much of a difference in the pattern. Uh, so we just want to make sure that's um, rounded up a bit. Only two digits after the decimal point, and then we're going to write those down. Uh, so I'm going to grab my snipping tool and just take a screenshot. Uh, that's what I do instead of writing them down occasionally. So we are going to uh, hit done in order to make sure that this is clipped to that size. Um, done. And then I'm going to make a new rectangle that is that size. So with the rectangle tool, I'm going to click once and we are going to type in 7.87 and 8.5. Eight point eight point five seven point eight seven and eight point five. We'll hit OK, and there it has made the rectangle of that size. Um, and this first rectangle, I am going to make it this same color as the background square. Um, the second, I'm going to copy and paste it, so we can go to Edit, Copy, and then actually Edit Paste in Place. And then we can choose our artwork. And um, then we're going to use the rect uh, sorry the artboard tool. And this time we will just click just like we did for the other ones. So uh, your artboard should be the same dimensions up here, 7.87 and 8.5. Um, so that is ready to export uh, just like the other ones. We're going to go to File, Export, Export As, and um, TIFFs are the highest quality file format that you can export. They are not lossy like JPEGs are, um, so I, I recommend uh, you use TIFFs, um, but they take a long time to upload onto the website, so for this example I'm going to use um, uh, JPEGs, and I'm going to call these uh, Jack Patterns Single Tile. Uh, and we can hit Use Artboards, and we only need artboards 6 through 8. Uh, and we can hit export and we want to export the highest quality file size and at 300 pixels per inch and we need to shut off anti-aliasing so anti-aliasing should be set to none um, if you don't set anti-aliasing to none uh, it will add a gray pixel around the edge of your artboard and that pixel will show up as white lines um, when you get it printed through spoon flower. Um, it's very annoying, so shut off anti-aliasing, please. Uh, so we are going to hit uh, OK, and then we can export those into spoon flower. I have it brought up here. We're going to go to design and sell and upload a design, and we are going to choose those files. Um, so let's do this one. We can choose open, I own the rights, and then we can choose upload. 
hopefully it doesn't take too long. I'm not trying to edit this video. Um, I would go ahead and save this document as well. Um, and uh, and I feel like I've forgotten to say something about this process, but it, it really is pretty straightforward. Uh, there we go. Spoon flour is ready now. So. There it is. Um, this is showing what it looks like on a fat quarter, which is 21 inches by 18 inches. I'm going to go ahead and switch it to yards. And then it's got a seam in it, and that's because this is a half drop pattern. So I just have to switch the repeat type to a half drop, and it should be good to go. Um, so I want uh, something on satin. I want like a yard of satin. Um, and I would just add that to my cart and man, that's so exciting. And the same process would go for any of the other designs. Uh, all right, well, let me know if you have any questions and uh, the same process goes for, um, pretty much goes for Contrado. Um, I think Redbubble has a similar process. I'm sure there are others. Uh, so. It's a um, nice, it's nice to have just a simple, easy way to get them out of Illustrator. And I will talk to you later. Bye.